Is this on? You know, this week's been slow, admittedly. Um, we've made some progress in some areas. Um, I'd like to first commemorate the idea that was first produced by the attributes of previous and how not to why 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 do we do this hmm and that's the question we'll be answering today i think well first of all it's best first to visit where this first came about um so the perfect sound project uh, first became a thing um, in the future when we found the perfect sound. But you haven't found it yet. And that's the beauty of the perfect sound project. Where is it gone? I don't know where it is. I've been trying to find it and I can't find it. I think really what I just said there is something quite um, difficult to actually put your finger on. I mean, really, in how we exhibit this um, thing. But I, I really want to pick up on something that came up uh, in the Perfect Sound Projects Congress, which we hold by annually for any of those interested. In this essay, I will attempt to survey the criticism of the criticizing of the criticism we criticize by criticizing the critical nature of the criticism beholden, especially through the psychofactual and libido spatial elements of the anthroneopsychological attitudes. It was here! It was here! We had it! And now it's gone! And I don't know where it is! I don't know where it is! <coughs> So moving on, I think that there's a certain subjugation hitherto of what we believe to be a uh, psycho libido. Sexual healing by Marvin Gaye. So let us move on to the next subject, a BBC culture article entitled, How do you design for the perfect sound? Well, this article is pathetic. Not only does it fail to recognise pseudo libido spatial elements as incorporated injustices threatening a certain psycho eco analysis of such, it fails ultimately to provide for something much more. A certain psycho-eco analysis of psycho libido spatial elements. I'm Ed, I do sound art! What does it mean to be free? The child asked. And I said, Freedom can only be attained when we find the perfect sound. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Fucking cunting shit! Fuck shit! Shitting fuck! Fucking! Fucking shitting! Cunting fuck shit! Shit! Shitting fuck! Fuck! Fucking fuck! With your fucking shitting shit and your shit! And your fucking shitting Cunting, shitting, fucking fuck! No, 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 no. He's a, he's a Scottish footballer. Um, that's one from my youth. I used to be an avid football player. Um, he plays for Motherwell. Um, it might be worth getting in contact with him actually because uh, I've heard that Scottish footballers are um, often um, avid sound finders uh, I know um, that uh, the goalkeeper what's his his goalkeeper name Scottish goalkeeper The Craig Gordon. Every single week, I'm not supposed to get to know every day. I'm not supposed to 
get behind the yellow line, please? It would be great if you could get behind the yellow line, because if you don't, I mean, you know, I'm getting kind of fed up here, because you rock up, you, you, I don't know who you are, you talk to me about Inspects Limited safety inspections, you know, and you won't stand behind the yellow line, and, you know, there's a boundary here. And I think you've crossed that, really. I mean, Sharon Osborne really had something to say here. Um, her seminal text, her 2006 text. Uh, what's it? The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Is it 2006? Some, uh, correct me, I, I may be wrong. Her text about The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Um, it's, you know, it stands up still today about how the very ca hungry caterpillar is um, bourgeois scum because the caterpillar is. They go around eating and using the majority of the resources, exploiting the resources around them. I mean, it, it's it's a fantastic synonym for the destruction of... Uh, the planet through climate change is that uh, the caterpillar feeding its own desires really um, and not working with its community uh, has hogged the resources and, and contributed to uh, no sort of community value by, by taking resources away from other uh, uh, insects that may require them um the caterpillar acts in its own individual interest. The caterpillar uh, is an individual, and, and in the context of the book, there, there appears to be no other insects that exist. Um, I mean, it's quite a fantastic metaphor, really, because the caterpillar, there are no other insects mentioned in the, in the entirety of The Very Hungry Caterpillar, the book. Um, and this is not because there weren't any insects there. It's because the book is written through the hyper-individualist, uh, capitalist mindset of the caterpillar. Um, I mean, what does this really teach the children? Um, it teaches a rejection of collectivism, a, a rejection of community value. In fact, it highlights no sort of community value at all um, so I, th I think that's something to think about um, and Sharon Osborne obviously outlined this to which there was the, the Louis Walsh response um, now Louis Walsh is let's be he, he's a pseudo intellect you know he, he's a dark web intellectual uh, he doesn't hold much uh I mean, really, okay, yeah, and I get what you're saying there, but I have to politely disagree because, you know, Simon Cowell also chimed in on that, and I'm happy he did because um, it really gets to me, you know, the things that people are saying about me, it really, it really gets to me, and I'm tired of it. I'm really, really tired of these things being said about me. So if we could just, I mean, let's tone it down a bit. Um, so next on the agenda. Um, so we have a sound to show you for this perfect sound report. And it's the sound of uh... So, Lucy holds the contents to the next subject, the subject in which, however, why, how does it become? If I may just make an interjection here. Yes. Lemony snippet. <laughs> yeah. mm. If I may add, 
Snicketing look snicket. Snicketing the snicket, of which becomes a snicket, not only snicketing snicket. How we snicket, not only before or after, but before mm. snicket snicket. Mm. I, I think you raise a serious issue about how snicket becomes snicket. Mm. Lemony, 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 I think you raise an interesting point here. What we believe to be Tin Henman's outgoing belief in what we receive to be something is in fact the opposite. How we determine the outgoing actually inhabits a sort of psycho-fiction, a fiction that only determines its existence through its ubiquity. The pseudo-libido elements that sit behind Tim Henman demonstrate this. Mm, I, I think one of the key elements about Tim Henman is, of course, that everyone wants to shag him. Well, that would suggest the libido isn't pseudo. I think in relation to the psycho-fiction you mentioned, Tim Henman's pseudo-shagability inhibits a sort of dual space. Yes, his shagability is completely pseudo. However, this pseudo-shagability is so ubiquitous in popular culture that it becomes hyper-fictional. You mean mm. his pseudo-shagability is both pseudo, because his shagability is not real, but also not pseudo at all, because the idea of his shagability, even as fiction, is ubiquitous. Exactly. Well, this is the sort of the same space as Danny DeVito inhabits. If we could just now get back to the matter at hand, it was Lucy's turn to speak. I think, really, we already spoke about it. I would like to introduce the next topic. Uh, the YouTube video, The Perfect Sound, https colon dash dash www.youtube.com forward slash watch question mark V equals one R seven V capital D five capital G hyphen capital F L K. I would advise delegates that we reject this on the basis that it mm. mocks our work mm. and suggests subliminally that the perfect sound doesn't actually exist, which we of course know it does. I, I agree. I, I actually think the, the interesting part of this video is the part truth that it represents. Some of, excuse me, that some of the techniques that are demonstrated in the videos, uh, lab testing and so on, are very similar to the techniques many delegates have been have, have used in the past and will probably use in the future. Uh, however, the whole video is tinged with defeatism. Mm. They only find the perfect sound because they assume it's non-existence. Absolutely. And of course, this relates back to the pseudo-psycho-hyperfictional psycho-pseudo-reality we were discussing earlier. So can we just vote quickly on the rejection of YouTube video, The Perfect Sound, by UCA Sonic Master as an actual representation of The Perfect Sound? All those in favour of rejection say aye. 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 So, moving on, I believe you had something to say, Lucy. Yes. Ba da 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 ba 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 oh Oh. Oh, 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 oh,
but what if the inverse of that is also or what if the inverse of it is true i.e what if we found the perfect sound but we didn't realize it was the perfect sound because it only exists as the perfect sound when we record it with our microphone and it also and I right, so it's only perfect when we record it but we didn't record it because we didn't think it was the perfect sound because that would mean I mean if if that was true then surely it depends on the type of recorder you have and the type of microphone you have and that's all down to people people decided how you know we decided that the good microphone would be the one that captures it the best the sound in terms of it sounds as as similar to our how our, how our ear would hear it but a lot of that is down to where the person puts it as well so there's all these things and it what if the perfect sound what i'm saying is what if the perfect sound is impossible to find or you know it's near impossible to find because there's only one sound that exists and it exists because it is i mean it's one object it, it, it's a sound you, you put it, you, there's a sound source and the perfect sound can only be found if we put a certain microphone with a certain recorder a certain you know whatever uh in a certain place in relation to the sound source and it's only at that uh point that the sound becomes perfect and it's only in the recording that it is perfect but what i would also like to add is in terms of approachability there is a certain sense of this in what we might call psycho affirmation and affirmational stability that dictates not only our certain psychabilities but often our elemental ones as well i'd like to add on top of this in addition to what you just said, in terms of actually adding on to what you just said, the point that you've just made, having introduced what you said and building upon it, it building upon the thing you just said, adding to it. In fact, I agree, it's just that I'd like to say something. So I think we can safely move on from this subject. Mm. No, we can't. I can do whatever the hell I like. Everything you do is nothing. You are nothing. I am everything. Let me be your God. Let me dictate to you, dictate to your thoughts. You are nothing to me, an entity, a commodity. I could let you go at a moment's notice. I can do whatever the fuck I want with you. I might kill you. I might actually kill you with my fists and my guns that I have. I have them in my home. Would you like that? Would you like me to kill you with my fists and my guns that I have in my home? Because it really can be and it should be what it is and become in this situation how it becomes and if it should or not I shouldn't really and that's how if it becomes where and who I, you know you have to be becoming what it is and where it is and when it is and how we do this it isn't something really that I can or can't if and how and why it shouldn't and when and where and that's really the crux of the matter and that's really the what, what I wanted to say in this perfect sound report because um, it's important you know and I hope this has been helpful for especially delegates who are listening to this perfect sound report members because ah uh, die die 
don't die. Why should we die? Oh, I'm a philosopher. Let me do philosophying. That's how you sound when you do your philosophying. But the perfect sound project. We're the most organised, creative, important people. We are the future. And every moment that you, as an individual, limit that. Look what I can do with my microphone. Uh... Do you hear that? Do you hear it? I'm turning the gain knob all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, and then all, all the way down again. I'm doing that for no other reason. No other reason than to show to show my technical ability. And let's talk about technical ability because you have to have that. If you are finding the perfect sound, you have to have the technical ability to find it. But let this technical ability be democratized. Let the technical ability be available to all because all should be trying to find the perfect sound project. Perfect sound, sorry. All should be members of the perfect sound project. Did you hear that distortion in the last section? I did that on purpose. It was a creative decision, a creative decision to for the low fidelity sound, because the low fidelity sound is democratized. Anyone can make art with the low fidelity sound, with the low quality. When low quality is accepted as a format, it opens up artistic and creative possibilities for everyone. This is why much of the perfect sound report is low quality. You thought it was a joke, but it's not. We are a perfectly serious and well thought out organisation. You think we are joking, you think we are making memes or that we, sh we we're not on the actual search for the perfect sound but you're wrong every decision we make is thought out every word calculated every decision decided prior and so i leave you with this thought and maybe it strikes fear into your heart. The perfect sound exists. And we will find it. Uh...